from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. Welcome to Robert Schuller with the Hour of Power. Today's special guests will be Gregory Peck, Helen Bean, Carol Lawrence, and today, Dr. Schuller will be presenting his second Be Happy Attitude. is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now let us listen to the reading of the Word of God as Gregory Peck reads for us these sentences of Jesus. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? For wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And now, the Crystal Cathedral Choir presents a special anthem composed and directed by Jack Ozawar.
we have a very special uh, opportunity for you this morning. If you've walked by the local bookstore in your town or village or city, uh, you probably have seen it in the, in the window, the newest book, Robert Schuller's The Be Happy Attitudes. Now, I, when Philip Johnson designed the cathedral, I said to him before he designed it, what's the building you're most proud of? He said, my next one. <laughs> and uh, this is my newest book, and I really believe it's the most helpful book I have ever written in my whole life. I think it's number 22. I'll tell you, if I could ask one prayer from God, and if I knew he would answer it, I would pray that one million people would get this book, because there are only a little over 200 million in America, and if a million got it, and each person influenced 20, we could change the country. We really could. They tell me, Arbitron and Nielsen, that we have three million people watching this program this morning on television. Wow. You know, we could change the mental climate of our country if all of the people got a hold of the be happy attitudes. They are, of course, the Beatitudes of Jesus. That's why I'm so absolutely sure this is the best book I've ever written, because really the Lord wrote it. I didn't. Eight chapters on the eight sentences of Jesus. Eight positive attitudes, the be happy attitudes, in the Beatitudes. Wow. Well, I'm preaching on this each chapter, each week. So if you can't afford to buy the book, you'll get the essence of them free. Well, I do this morning want to send you a special copy. It's the same book that you can buy in your bookstore. There they charge $12.95, I think. But this one is only $30. <laughs> and the reason is this is a special edition under the same jacket with a beautiful engraved cover. And the reason we charge $30 is because I donate all the royalties and I talk the publisher into selling it at his cost. So it costs us just a little over a buck a piece. It's hard to believe, but they are generous and everybody is. That means that with a gift of $30, you'll receive a premier, lasting, gorgeous edition. And all the money can be used to help pay the television airtime that brings this ministry to you and to your friends. Did I tell you last week about the Peanuts cartoon? I thought it was fabulous. Charlie Schultz, you know? Here's Linus sitting in bed on a Sunday morning watching TV. And he's watching some TV preacher. Fortunately, you can't see the face. <laughs> and the TV preacher is saying, I need money or I can't continue. The next scene, if I don't hear from you this week, we're in trouble. The third scene, preacher says, in fact, if I don't hear from you this week, Next Sunday, I won't be here. The last scene, Linus says, so long. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is the funniest. I said, Schultz, the cartoon said, I love it. Be my guest. <laughs> and if he comes, I'll have him make the pitch. <laughs> it really. Oh, we need the help. Uh, the airtime is going up drastically. And there's a toll-free number that we'll be having on our screen, 1-800-85 and the word happy. Get it? It's 1985. You with me? Dial 1-800-85 and the word happy. It's spelled with two Ps, H-A-P-P-Y. And uh, we'll take your order, we'll get your book out to you. May God help it. It'll change the mental climate of our country. Simply write to me, Robert Schuller, Garden Grove, California. The Be Happy Attitudes, a special edition for you. My guest this morning is no stranger to us, a friend of many, many years. Many years ago, we had a dream, and the dream was to build a hospital in Mexico, a place called Chapas, where there was no medical care center. And one of my dear friends, my guest, who's going to be standing with me in a moment, came and helped us. She helped us with a gift in the six-figure bracket. Let's just put it that way. And her tremendous support made it possible for that hospital to get off the ground 
in Chiapas, Mexico. She is a wonderful person. You're going to find out more about her, but her name is on porcelain in, wow, all over the world. Helen Bean, God loves you, and so do I. Robert, it's such a joy to be here, a very special joy, and I have a very nice chore to do. This was just created by the Beam Studio and came out of the kiln just several days ago, and this is to celebrate your 30th anniversary of the ministry. But there is a double pleasure. As I was in your office just a few moments ago, I saw the beautiful doc, well, I guess it was a certificate, by, this, by His Holiness, a special apostolic blessing for you when you were at the Vatican. And would you believe that this, this sculpture is of His Holiness's hands, where He released a dove of peace in honor of the children of the world and His love for children around the world. And I just thought it would be so appropriate to present it to you because of the lovely peace and hope through your word that you inspire people through this beautiful cathedral and through your books and through your travels with my love and affection dr shirla the flight of the dove of peace it's beautiful thank you i love you helen thank you and the next time I have the honor of an audience with the Holy Father, I will remind him that I have this from you. Well, he's going to get number two. This is number one. Oh. I'm sorry about that, but this is how it happens. And uh, in fact, next week, this will be the centerpiece at 15 tables in New York City when we give a luncheon for all the ambassador's wives to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the founding of the United Nation to promote global peace. Fabulous, fabulous. Helen Bean, you are terrific. You know, may I have this? It's specially for you, you with know, love. This is terrific. Helen Bean's biography, With a Little Luck, An American Odyssey. It ought to be in the bestseller list, and you can make it. Just go to the bookstore and make sure that they have it and pick up a copy with a little luck, an American Odyssey by Helen Bean. It's unbelievable. Now, you are, a, you've been a friend of Lord Mountbatten? Mm-hmm. Many, many years. The Queen of England? Yes. Prince and Princess Diana? Wales. And a friend of the three popes, two popes, one pope? Three, and I have met, no, I've met three, but we've done work for five. And your porcelains have been given as heads, as gifts from our presidents? Eight presidents. Eight presidents? And you own the American champion polo team, is that right? Three times world championship for our polo team, the beam team. How about that? And, <laughs> <laughs> and we won Her Majesty's Cup in England. The beam team played against Lady Diawla's Blue Prince Charles' team, and we beat him 11-5. Sorry about that, Your <laughs> Royal Highness. <laughs> I hope he wins this time, though, because I'd like very much for the Beam Trophy to be presented to him by his lovely wife, Princess Di. So we hope that, um, with a little luck, <laughs> with a little luck, <laughs> he'll win. <laughs> but he's Where, got a what do, you, what do you call your primary residence? Well, we have studios in England, you know. My primary residence is in Trenton, New Jersey, where the beautiful Beam Studio is. We have about 250 wonderful artisans of all lovely ages from 16, 18 to 65 and 72, because art knows no age, you know, it right. should be young or in between. It cannot be true that you are the daughter of a poor immigrant Italian family. How, and from there to where you are, it's an incredible, unbelievable story. 19, 1909 in Ellis Island with two little children, not knowing the language, not knowing the land, you know, they dreamed and read about this wonderful country of ours and to think that it all happened and I'm so, I'm so pleased and so honored with the, the, the courage they had to come to this land. And here I am, and it could happen to anybody to be successful, but love what you're doing, just like you love what you're doing, Dr. Shula. I love what I'm doing. And I always tell people, change jobs if you're not happy, but find what you love doing and then do it with all your heart, 24 hours a day. 
<laughs> because then you know you really love it when you just keep going back to it all the time. But uh, it's, it's a great story. Is it true that you weren't always an artist, that you were an optician? Uh-huh. On is Fifth it, Avenue. Is it true that some handsome guy walked in front of you, you stuck your leg out, tripped him, and grabbed him? Oh, absolutely. And you adjusted his glasses? And why not? The king of cinema, Clark Abel. I was all of 22, and I took advantage of him. I was <laughs> fixing his glasses, and I was saying, oh, Mr. Gable, oh, wait, no, go to the right. And, you know, the rules of E.B. Myrowitz was that you must never touch your client. But I figured if I was going to be fired, let me be fired for manhandling Clark Abel. <laughs> Oh, he, he was a divine person. But then again, Baron, Baron, uh, Mr. Baruch came in one day with Ponsignes. And you see, I used to work in the cellar in the grinding glasses, and only men were allowed to be opticians. I was an optician, first woman licensed in New York City, number 495. Then one day there was an epidemic of fever, you know, it was a flu epidemic, and uh, they called for me downstairs, and I had to put my dress on, and. And I said, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to stay up here all the time? Well, it happened. I fitted so many wonderful glasses during that fever epidemic that I became a regular upstairs. And Mr. Baruch came in one day, and he had those pince nez, and all the men said, oh, boy, she's going to be fired now. She'll never be able to fit those very delicate glasses. And if anything breaks, on the, it'll take four weeks to get one of the lenses. Well, wow. I did them correctly, and he put them on. He says, young lady, put his Wall Street Journal uh, under his arm and walked out. Oh, was I relieved. But I made it, and I remained upstairs for 10 years. Were you married at the time? Yes. To a guy named Ed? Ed Edward Marshall Beam, and a farmer, was, a farmer. And he was a farmer. Right. And you encouraged him? Together. You bet. Together. But was he the artist? A great artist, but he never studied art. It was a God-given talent, because his, his work was to breed cattle, and, uh, you know, Guernsey cattle, and show them and fit them, and produce good quality milk and all of that. And then together we realized this dream. Started in a little basement, and soon many wonderful breaks came our way. But it wasn't easy, Robert. Nothing good ever comes easy, because you begin to love it and to appreciate it more, the success. The lean years, even though they were lean, you build on them, the wisdom, and, and you grow with them. You had a tough time getting started, didn't oh, yes. you? Well, you see, everyone would like to turn a porcelain over and want to see made in Paris, made in Germany, made in England, all these foreign lands, and we were the first Americans. It was a very, very yeah. tough obstacle. And then I said, we too can make it in America. And we did a beautiful quality. Ed Beam was able to research this beautiful quality porcelain. Then one day I called the Metropolitan Museum and I told them I was the wife of the only porcelain maker in this country. And they said, well, I never heard of such a thing. Porcelain is not made in this country. Because you know, you, especially China, hard paste porcelain. And I think he came out of curiosity. And when he saw the beautiful work, there were only eight pieces at the time. And he said, I'd like to buy some of these for the Metropolitan Museum. I said, Mr. Andres, you don't have to purchase these. I'll give them to you. Imagine being represented in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Wow. And but you. And today, 150 museums. 150 have the museums. Deep, yes, including the Vatican, Buckingham Palace. Elysee Palace, Smithsonian, the White House, on and on and on. Am I grateful to the Lord? Oh, Robert, I am. Very much so. Without him, I don't travel. He's in my heart. His angels are on my shoulders. And I fear nowhere. I've been in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, China, the guest of many of those countries. The first woman to be invited to China, mm -hmm. right? In 73. Mm. You know, we did the beautiful big swans that went to Chairman Mao, oh. and they now grace the, uh, the Great Hall in, in Peking. And then the second pair is in the Oval Room. Mrs. Reagan put them there. They were in the Smithsonian. And the third pair, guess where the third pair is? You were there very recently, right next to the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. Yes, yes. What an honor. Three beautiful places of the world. Communist, religion, and the free world. One of the main important parts of the free world, so... But the thing that, you know, I think we should say that you're so excited about today is you're building another hospital. Well, oh, that's going to be February 24th in Palm Beach. We're having the Ambassador's Ball for the Children of Africa. And when, when we talked about the one in Mexico, we said, you know, the children of Africa now have all, not all the food they need, but they're getting food that they need. And what's the second most important thing that they need? They need a children's hospital in a particular place 
it is a very, very poor area. And that's what we're having. A ball, a polo game, and about 15, 20 ambassadors will be flying down to Palm Beach, and we hope, we think we will make it on the first ball, the complete funds for this little children's hospital in Africa. Helen Bean, I want you to know, I know super wealthy people, and either they're the happiest people in the world or they're the most miserable people. The difference is, is the Lord in their life. And if the Lord is in their life, then they use their wealth to do great good for so much good that waits to be done. You're that kind of a girl. God loves you, so do I, with a little bit of luck and a lot of blessing of a lot of our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you Helen. God. Thank you for having me. in America. With a little luck, go to your bookstore and order it. Put it on the bestseller list. She's a dynamic gal, and besides, she does so much good with the money she gets. You don't begin to know the half of it. I know a little, and I'm grateful to God for her. just returned from Ethiopia. I don't understand why some people must suffer or why children and young people die. I don't understand why some people have plenty while others just barely get by. Why do new waves of trouble keep pounding around us 
before yesterday's waves ebb away. But at moments like this, when my faith starts to falter, God's spirit will tenderly whisper and say, there's a reason, there's a plan, there's a purpose, and there's a goal, and Jesus who loves us more than anyone can is still very much in control. Troubles come and go, and most manage to find me. I don't hope for life without pain. But deep within my soul is God's love to remind me that loss can be turned into gain. As I daily encounter defeat and rejection, on the road to where I want to be. I remember that God seeks to find my perfection using trials to polish his image in me. And there's a reason, there's a plan kind they are. That's very sweet. You're another one of God's precious, beautiful darlings. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Dr. Schiller. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, our lessons these weeks are from the Beatitudes, the eight sacred sentences of Jesus that introduced his whole public ministry by being the entrance to the Sermon on the Mount. Eight sentences, all beginning with the words, be happy, if you want a literal translation. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We studied that last week. Positive attitude number one, I need help, I can't do it alone. Class. Repeat it after me. I need help. I can't do it alone. Once more. I need help. I can't do it alone. What a great positive attitude. Today, positive attitude at number two. I'm really hurting, but I'm going to bounce back. Interesting why that should be the second positive attitude. Why up front with it? For the simple reason that Christianity is not a Pollyanna religion. Not at all. I hope if you're watching on television, you'll either